can't be filled with the word of God and still have a negative outlook because once the word of God comes in me and I reflect upon it it's supposed to cause me to move in manners and ways that I never moved before because if I am a believer then I ought to be a receiver of what God has ordained for me to have Stand theology as a methodical interpretation of spiritual truth or religious truth and you see psychology as a dynamic that operates and focuses on the mind you would think that the discipline of theology and the discipline of psychology were two separate entities However, the immunity is short-lived because whenever the psychologist or the theologian approaches the individual and invites him or her to take a look at themselves or to reflect on themselves, then the dynamics has just shifted now because anytime I'm forced to look at myself I am now opening my mind up for inspection. And anytime I'm forced to look at myself, I'm forced to reflect whether it is in the psychologist's office or whether it is in the pew. Psychology and theology are going to come together. There's absolutely no way then for you to change if you don't get a mind change. And I don't know why all of you came here. I guess y'all came here to change. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And so the Bible then must have some psychological components and has to touch us in a psychological manner in order to get us to change our minds. And I don't have to change your circumstance if I got your mind changed. Because if you change your mind, you'll change your space. The, dis the disciplines then are utilized as tools and uh, yes uh, to develop yes uh, the method of knowing whether or not uh, I sit and talk to therapy or get some counseling or whether or not I read my Bible the, the, the whole concept is for me to know and I need to know myself because that's been my problem anytime you're moving around and don't know yourself you will end up in circumstances and situations that you will not like because you didn't know yourself well enough to know what you should have avoided and what you should have walked away from. Uh, can I take my time? They can take my time. You see, theory, you see, the theory then has got to be translated into an immediate and practical concern. If that doesn't happen, then I'm just in church having another discourse, walking out the same way I came in and sang a few songs, did a little dancing and prancing and, uh, and uh, waiting for next Sunday. Uh, because it's got to come off the paper and it's got to find its way in my mind. And once it gets in my mind, then it becomes a part of my life because thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Uh, I can't be filled with the word of God and still have a negative outlook because once the word of God comes in me and I reflect upon it, it's supposed to cause me to move in manners and ways that I never moved before because if I am a believer, then I ought to be a receiver of what God has ordained for me to have. I propose then that reflection becomes the systematic effort to clarify, first of all in psychology, the meaning of identity uh, or in faith. The whole point is that I have to reflect. And as he's talking about transformation, I propose that there is no transformation unless there is first reflection. I, I have to be able to stand out of myself and look at myself and look at myself from a different set of rules in order to understand who I really am. 
Uh, let me put it differently. You see, you grow up with people and you form certain characteristics and you're not conscious of the characteristics that you're forming. It's just a matter of, might I say, binary fission, it's just fusion. It's just happening simply because you are around. And when you're around people, you assimilate certain attitudes and you simulate certain dispositions very subconsciously. I remember for years and years I would come out and preach uh, here at the, uh, it was, uh, I can't even remember the name of it now, uh, Greater Bethany, yes. Uh -huh. and, uh, and for years and years I would come and preach at Greater Bethany. And uh, I would hang around Bishop McMurray all the time. And so we would go out together and we would hang around and eat and talk and stuff. And I would go home and I would have to sort of exorcise Bishop McMurray uh, out of my system, you know. Uh, ah, Jones, what's going on, man? How you doing, man? Tall Texan, what's happening? And so that was his manner. And the next thing you know, I was talking like him when I got home. And they say, oh, Jones, you've been to California, haven't you? I said, yeah, I've been with Mac. Uh, so consequently, I would just absorb uh, his disposition and absorb his language without being conscious. And many times, as you live on a day-to-day -day basis, you pick up things and you absorb things and, and you assimilate things because of the environment that you are a part of. Uh, every now and then, something happens in your life that forces you to take a look at yourself and then and only then do you find out that there were certain characteristics that have become a part of me that I didn't know I was assimilating all experience, psychological or theological, is grist, grain really, for the mill of interpretation in such a context. And that is, any experience that I have leaves a mark on me. Whether I'm conscious of that mark or not, it leaves an indelible print on me. And every now and then, I got to get a word or I got to see the counselor, I got to go to somebody and step back and take a look at myself. Anybody who isn't periodically taking looks at themselves is not running their lives anymore. Somebody else is running it. I, I'm going to preach, I'm going to preach. You see, anytime you are running your life, you have to take account of where you're going and what's going on in your life. If you're not running it, then you just hook on to somebody and let them take you wherever they want you to go. But when you decide that this is my life, and I need to live it in abundance, I'm taking it back in my hand. And the only way to take it back in your hand is to reflect upon who you are and identify who you are in light of what you can be. I want to be pragmatic. You see, the adequacy of any interpretation may be measured by its ability to open the person up. If I'm hearing the word of God, but God does not open me up, then I will never change. I will always be the same. What God is doing is the word of God divides asunder. It it's sharp than a two-edged sword. It pierces. It, 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 he gets down on the inside and he sort of takes open, open stuff up that I have kept closed up and go way down inside to bring out some stuff that I have kept closed that I have covered you know I sort of you know I don't know about you but I, I sort of cover mine up and cover it up with justifications that make no sense because I can really explain why I did what I did I, I can convince you to believe that what I did I did and I should have done it but the word of God cuts through all of the foolishness of my intellectual justification and he brings me to a place where I've got to look at myself oh I feel like preaching here I feel like meddling first sometimes you know you look at other folk and it's easy to point finger uh, it's easy man oh I'm holy when I look at other folk but when God opens you up 
And you say, uh, 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 don't want to deal with it, don't want to deal with it. Uh, Charles R. Stinnett Jr. wrote, and I quote, he said, whether the goal of the reflective discipline is to clarify the meaning of identity, uh, that went with the psychotherapy there, or faith, that is theological reflection, a phenomenological perspective focuses attention upon the centering process itself by which the person collects and identifies himself en route, unquote. It is better for God to open you up in a session, and it's better for God to show you who you are through the Word of God than for you to go through some horrific experience and then only after the divorce or after you just shot somebody or after somebody you beat somebody half to death or after you've been slapped or 12 or 5 years in prison before you discover who you are. I don't want to learn it like that. I want God to show me who I am before the calamity. Uh, I want to know, can I handle it before I get in it? I want to know who I am before I make a move. <laughs> because oftentimes we have moved on who we thought we were, <laughs> only to find out that in great pain I should not have been in this place. I want to guide my steps through the word of God and not be blown to and fro by circumstances that I could have avoided had I understood who I was. Oh, I'm preaching to myself. May God help me. Instead of being blocked then by a paralyzing struggle between conflicting presuppositions about reality the way is left open to regard faith because once I come out of the struggle and I'm willing to take a look at myself then what happens now is all kinds of possibilities are open I don't have to be this way because my mama was this way I don't have to be this way because my daddy was this way I don't have to be this way because of any generational situation what God does is says look at yourself look at what you can be and open the door to the possibilities of becoming greater than you have ever been oh, I feel it here don't settle for what used to be declare to yourself what used to be is past what I will be is future and I don't have to live in this misery not another day I am going to move from this address to the next place in God. Oh, I feel it here. When you add to the dialogue then between psychology and religion, what happens now is truth is set within an existential realm. It is truth that is set. It's real. It is not just a conversation. We're not just here talking. We're here trying to change. We're here dropping off some stuff and and putting on some stuff we didn't just come here to dress up and show off we came here to think about who we are and think about what we can be oh it's a lot of potential in here look at your neighbor say neighbor's a lot of potential in here oh, look at your name look at your neighbor say neighbor there's a lot of potential in here <laughs> oh yeah I'm just gonna find a way to release it that's all I'm just gonna find a way to release it <laughs> uh, reflection and transformation then must be understood as mutually interacting yeah. Uh, it's a mutual interacting of the mind and that is I am reflecting on what I used to be I'm reflecting and I'm looking at what I can become it's a sort of pre-Jesus post Jesus uh, there's a pre-Jesus me who didn't have confidence uh, a pre-Jesus me who walked around with a lot of guilt uh, a pre-Jesus me who had a lot of low self-esteem a pre Jesus me who was formed and shaped by the negative environment that I came out of but now there's a post Jesus me and that is we have looked at what I used to be and we have decided that that's not all I can be 
So instead of staying in what I used to be, I reach for what I can be. And whoever can't come with me can stay with what I used to be. Ah, I feel it here. It is William James. William James, he said this. William James called it a theater of simultaneous possibilities, unquote. I have so much to become that I can't afford to keep my past ahead of me. I've got so much to become that I don't have time to remember what I used to be because I'm coming out of and I'm going into. Uh, look at somebody say you're getting ready to intimidate some folk. You see whenever you allow yourself to become more than you have ever been folk are intimidated by the new you and you know you're changing when folk who used to be comfortable with you uh, ain't comfortable with you no more uh, oh, I feel it here uh, the terms reflection then and transformation are extremely pivotal to this discussion I may define I haven't defined it yet but reflection may be defined as the human capacity for taking thought to stand outside one's own experience by means of reason and recollection and imagination and anticipation so I can reflect upon me the person who needs to look at me more than anybody is me I need to know me I need to know where my weaknesses are particularly because the enemy likes to play with weakness and he likes to get you in your appetite in your appetency it's the things you like he likes to put ahead of you and until you get the power to overcome what you like the enemy will completely control and move you against yourself uh, so reflection helps me to look at my own experience to step out of me but look at me and use the recollection of the past use my imagination and my reasoning to evaluate who I am and where I am it's like having a systems for a car you take the car and they plug it into a system and the system tells them exactly what's going on in the car what's right what's wrong what needs to be repaired needs to be fixed ah, every now and then you need to get off the road and get in a meditative mode and allow the Lord to plug you into the system and let the system tell you what you have need of and let the system fix what you have need to correct because if not the enemy is going to catch you in a situation where before you know it you've done something you should not have done and leave you crippled and wounded and broken simply because you did not reflect because once you reflect you will change the way you operate I feel something pushing me right about now. It's essential now to understand this because when we look at reflection it means more than just the creative process but it introduces faith and insight. It brings intuition and it brings structure and what it does now is it brings me to the place where I can stand on the premises and the principles of God and when I'm standing on the principles of God my outcome can be determined when I'm not standing on principle I don't know what will happen but when I'm standing on the principles of God I know that victory shall be mine oh I feel something helping me here it's true because many times people give the impression that church folk don't have much sense and when you decided to go to church folk thought you were crazy they thought you were crazy when you decided you go put your money in church did nobody thought you were crazy when you were buying everybody drinks uh-huh nobody thought you were crazy
crazy. Can I get some monitors from somebody? Uh, nobody thought you were crazy when you were buying ganja and uh, and passing the weed around. You know, I might as well preach. Uh, snorting cocaine. Nobody thought you were crazy yeah, when you were literally losing your mind. But as soon as you declared, I want to meet Jesus, somebody thought you had slipped off the deep path. But the truth of the matter is, without God, there is no way to reflect upon yourself properly. I need to look at myself from the eyes of God. It's the things you like he likes to put ahead of you and until you get the power to overcome what you like the enemy will completely control and move you against yourself uh, so reflection helps me to look at my own experience to step out of me but look at me and use the recollection of the past use my imagination and my reasoning to evaluate who I am and where I am. It's like having a system for a car. You take the car and they plug it into a system and the system tells them exactly what's going on in the car. What's right, what's wrong, what needs to be repaired, needs to be fixed. Ah, every now and then you need to get off the road and get in a meditative mode and allow the Lord to plug you into the system and let the system tell you what you have need of and let the system fix what you have need to correct because if not the enemy is going to catch you in a situation where before you know it you've done something you should not have done and leave you crippled and wounded and broken simply because you did not reflect because once you reflect you will change the way you operate it's essential now to understand this because when we look at reflection it means more than just the creative process but it introduces faith and insight it brings intuition and it brings structure and what it does now is it brings me to the place where I can stand on the premises and the principles of God and when I'm standing on the principles of God my outcome can be determined when I'm not standing on principle, I don't know what will happen. But when I'm standing on the principles of God, I know that victory shall be mine. Oh, I feel something helping me here. It's true because many times people give the impression that church folk don't have much sense. And when you decided to go to church, folk thought you were crazy. They thought you were crazy when you decided you go put your money in church. Didn't know Nobody thought you were crazy when you were buying everybody drinks. Uh -huh. Nobody thought you were crazy. Can I get some monitors from somebody? Uh, nobody thought you were crazy when you were buying ganja and uh, and passing the weed around. You know, I might as well preach. Uh, snorting cocaine. Nobody thought you were crazy when you were literally losing your mind. But as soon as you declared, I want to meet Jesus, somebody thought you had slipped off the deep path but the truth of the matter is without God there is no way to reflect upon yourself properly I need to look at myself from the eyes of God and when God shows me myself it's because he's getting ready to take me to another level he's getting ready to move me to something else and to take me to a height I've never been but I had to take a look at myself Oh God, I'm sick and tired of other people evaluating what I can or cannot do. I want God to show me what I can and cannot do. And I just believe that when God begins to show you yourself, he shows you possibilities and potentialities that nobody else thought that you could ever achieve. We are wasting our minds when we don't stop every now and then and meditate in the word. Because 
because if I meditate in the word it will establish me and it will cause me to stand like a tree by the rivers of water and I will find that the word and I can overcome any circumstance because I got God on my side and when I've got God not only on my side but when I've got God on the inside then I have power to step out into this world and declare you're not going to change me but I'm getting ready to change you oh, I'm going to do I have some time I have a little time you see all science studied to their highest level will end up with God I don't care if it's psychology biology anything that goes to its level will end up with God and because God is too rational to rationalize and because God is too reasonable to reason it stands to reason that we sooner or later have to walk by faith because all intellectuality has to stop when it comes to God and that means we've got to move now from the intellect into faith and when I look at myself by faith I don't throw myself away regardless of my history what I say is where I've been all right but where I'm going is what God intends for me he uses then every one of my experiences in the past because he manipulates he wheels and deals and he orchestrates of the past and what he does is he declares now that all things work together for good he takes every one of your bad experiences and every one of your abuses he takes your ups and your downs he takes your likes and your dislikes he takes how they talked about you how they treated you he takes everything that you have ever had to go through and he mixes it together and he fixes it so when you come out you will be better than you've ever been I feel the Holy Ghost you see many times we allow people to discredit our experience and we allow people to make us feel bad because of all the stuff that we've been through but let me tell you this it does not at all disqualify you in fact everything you've been through qualifies you to declare the power and the strength of the living God oh God I wish I had some help here I wish I had right here you see many of us got to realize this that psychology and religion have always been a part of the intellectual struggle and the peer pressure of psychology on religion to prove itself as a science is striking Sigmund Freud never wanted any of his patients to deal with God he wanted all of them to forget God and many Christian psychologists remain intimidated by psychology and they don't want to understand it in light of the scriptures but I've proven over these last few weeks that unless you have theological insight you cannot understand the psychology it takes the word of God to change the mind of a man to cause him to understand that if I can walk with God I can overcome any deficit in my character I feel like preaching now uh, what they want us to do is avoid it so I coined a little term here they want me to walk away from theology so they want me to turn off Salvation Boulevard by taking a left on AIDS Parkway tried to avoid Religion Road and had to turn around in Dope Park just before losing my mind freeway to pay a heavy toll on Suicide Highway finally I found out that the way of the cross leads home if you want to go home you got to get in the word of God it is here now the reality of Paul's experience and what he's saying now is that you've got to be redeemed and redemption must be expressed in real experiences you've got to walk it you've got to talk it it's got to control your attitude it ain't just clapping hands and jumping up in church it's got to change your disposition it's got to move it's not just a head trip which does not tell us 
what to do in our individual pilgrim's progress or our paradise regain. It's not just a head trip or a mental ascent to doctrine and the enjoyment of pleasant imagery and imagination. No, it's an action. You've got to put it to your feet. It's the way you walk. It's the way you talk. It's the way you deal with folk around you. It's the way you feel about yourself. It's the way you operate in your family. It ain't just to sit and discuss it. It's to walk it, to live it. It's the, it becomes the smile on your face. It becomes the disposition that you have until somebody can look at you and tell you're not the same. Something's happening to you. And here is it's more than just revelation. It becomes a part of life itself. Here is a profundity. I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God. The reason I can present it is because I have accepted the doctrine of condemnation the doctrine of justification the doctrine of sanctification the doctrine of glorification. He was merciful to me so I look at myself and say based on his mercies that took care of my past I don't have to live in my past any longer I don't have to perpetuate what I used to do I'm getting ready to do some new things get somebody high five say I'm getting ready to do some new things uh, I hate it I feel like preaching anyhow touch somebody say it's not a quick fix it's going to take time honey it's going to take time Ah, uh, but if you hang with the process you feel some things happening already here's what he says he says by the mercies of God and the first thing you've got to understand is God is going to take the ride with you because the legalist says where sin abounded grace did much more abound and the legalist said Paul do you mean to tell me that God is willing to forgive a person's sins as often as he or she commits them and the answer is yes I feel like preaching here when I came into your life I knew it would take some time for you to come out of what you used to be and take for me to take you where I want you to be because you've been so steeped in the way you are I feel like preaching here I know where I'm taking you so I'm not going to leave you when you make mistakes because I'm already prepared to cover your mistakes to take you to where I want you to be because when I met you in the first place you were no good when I met you so your being bad don't stop me from working with you because you were no good when I met you in the first place so now I'm going to hang with you till you drop off all of those weaknesses and put on the new life because you got to order your steps in the word of the Lord you got to order your steps in a way that the sinful nature has no more control because I broke the sinful nature and when I broke the nature of sin I broke it so you don't have to sin if you don't want to but I got to hang with you until you get the right mindset and the right mindset is to understand that Satan can't make you do it if you don't want to do it he can't control and he can't make you walk the way that he wants you to walk so you got to reckon yourself as dead you got to tell yourself I died to that mess because anything you die from can't have control over you any longer we might as well have church pad and something is changing already can I preach like I feel it give somebody high five and say something is changing in my life already I find myself doing stuff that I never thought I could do I found myself praying 
for my enemies when before I would just wipe them out I found myself praying for folk that despitefully use me something's happening to me I find myself fighting over stuff that I used to just give in to but now I'm putting up a fight and I'm telling the devil because I used to don't mean you can make me because something is changing in me I've got more hope and expectation than I've ever had in my life and I'm learning to believe that no matter how messed up a thing is God can work it out I'm learning to believe that I don't have to give up but I can hang in there because if I wait it out God will work it out and I don't have to back up from it I'm learning how to control my space I'm learning how to command and let demons know that this is my space and you can't come up in my space because there's an anointing here I'm learning how to use the name of Jesus and the power that's associated in the name something is happening I feel like preaching here I know something is happening because old friends don't understand who I've become I've become so different that I look new to old friends I've become so different that the foolishness I used to live with I don't live with it no more something has happened things that I used to enjoy I don't run with them no more I feel like preaching here shake somebody's hand say something's going on in me I'm rolling out of bed at three in the morning picking up a Bible that ain't me it is now I'm rolling out of bed rolling on my knees calling on the name of the Lord didn't you to do it but I'm doing it now something is happening I feel the Holy Ghost I feel the power of God I wish I had some strength in here give somebody a high five say I'm changing I'm changing I looked at myself and I said to myself something wrong here you ain't the same person you got more power than you ever had you had more victories than you ever had. Can I preach like I feel it? Mama said you couldn't do it, but tell her you did. Daddy said you'd never be something. The devil is a liar. I am somebody in the name of Jesus. I feel the Holy Ghost. Some yokes that had you bound. Do I have some folk in here that can testify? Some things had me bound, but I shook them off by the power of the Holy Ghost. And they ain't got no control over me now. Things I used to cry about don't bring me to tears no more. I wish I could preach to somebody. Give somebody a high five. Say, I don't cry over that no more. I'm over that. I can rejoice. I can look back over my life life and stuff that embarrassed me is now a testimony I can open my mouth and talk about it because I got victory I got the victory I feel like preaching in here give somebody a high five say I'm changing I looked at my feet they look new I looked at my hands they did too I looked at my mind I got a new mind I got a new thought I got victory I got power tell the devil I'm not the same I'm changed I'm sad. 
feel like running. I feel like shouting. I feel like lifting him up. Give somebody a high five. Say love under new management. I ain't the same. I've got more joy than I ever had. Got more peace than I ever had. Got more love than I ever had. Got more peace than I ever had. devils that had me bound can't touch me no more. The situation that have caused me to lose my mind can't touch it no more. You can do what you wanna, say what you wanna, I'll still be victorious.